Hello and welcome to episode 133 three of Trusty Hogs in Australia. It's me. Welcome. It's me, Catherine Bauer. <laughs> and that, that was Helen Bauer. I think you'll have guessed it. I've, it I've become Australian now. I've got the accent. I bloody love a Tim Tam. Oh, you Do know you? What? I think they're Hell fine. Hell yeah, they're just fine. Can I just they're say they're literally fine? Just it's like, fine. have you had a like bourbon? Because those are much better. Do you know you what I mean? A bourbon. A bourbon. No, is... I meant a whiskey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Through the fog, step forth the trusty hogs. Yeah, you're gonna give them your problems and they will solve them. Or maybe they won't. And that's your problem. They'll have guests. Trusty hogs, trust the trusty hogs, or maybe not. So, have you tried whiskey? That would be an interesting one to try. Uh, no, you're right. It is a bourbon, but I, yeah, they're fine. Have you seen um, the bourbon biscuits they're now selling at M and S? You know, they were doing the. Um, coated bourbon biscuits where it was a bourbon cream biscuit dipped in chocolate no, fuck, that now they're amazing. doing bourbon double stuffed fuck which is off. a bourbon biscuit with double the amount of cream in the middle i want the dipped guys i want double dipped you think you want double dipped you actually want the double dipped custard creams i don't like custard creams why though no nope, just not for me it's just sugar and that's why, I, that's why i don't like it it just tastes like sugar i want chocolate My, i always want chocolate <sighs> I ne- like I don't eat jelly sweets really. I don't like that's not what I go for. I'm just always yeah. I just themed. saw you eating a chocolate cake in all fairness. Oh, fuck, it was so good. It looked beautiful. It was so good. So we're I'm um, working out of this podcast studio in Australia, and Australians are so welcoming. It's I really so love it. friendly as a culture. I they're so inclusive mm-hmm. for white tourists. <laughs> and, and you know what? It's a pleasure and a privilege. Thank mm-hmm, you for having us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just want to caveat that. But uh, what I meant to say was that this podcast studio, it's somebody's birthday. Shout out to them. Happy and birthday. they had a beautiful cake, uh, like chocolate mousse cake. Yeah. And they just gave us some. Like we're involved in the birthday. We're not, but I'm thrilled. I feel like it's, it's friendly to the point that if you go into a coffee shop twice, the second time you go in, welcome back. I know. Welcome back. Now, to be fair, we went to the same coffee shop twice in the same day. Helen. Welcome back. <laughs> you gotta stop it. It's nice. I it's just to friendly. It. It's it just is. friendly. It is nice. I'm just trying to get the accent before I go home. Okay, well, I'm glad you have some time. Um, let's. You know, I've been mistaken for Australian before. No, you have. In the UK, I have. People have in been like, UK. I'm not joking. People have been like, oh, where in Australia are you from? Other English people have said it to me before. They've been like, are you from Australia? Were you doing your accent at the time? No, just talking, talking like these. Okay. All right. So, yes. Um, I'm from Malulabar. What's Malulabar? I don't know. I used to work in a cafe in London and one of the guys was Australian there and he had a postcard up from Malulabar. And I just remember that. I remember Simon, like. what the hell is Malulabar? It was right by where I was washing dishes was this postcard from Malulabar. So I can see it really clearly in my mind. It's up north. Simon's uncle lives there. It's real. Malulaba. What's it like? Really, really hot and like muggy and humid and like coastal. Like coastal and humid. Beachy. Don't mind if we do. Like Torquay in Devon. Torquay in Devon, I'd say. Yeah, but like that's what the boat is. Really. It's like exactly the same as Torquay in Devon. That's what I'd Simon say. definitely says. <laughs> <laughs> Malulaba. There's just so many beautiful <laughs> place names in Australia. I was like, <laughs> that's a beautiful place name to you, is it? Yeah. There's so many gorgeous. I was like on um, Google Maps and I was sort of like looking at like the different places we're staying. So obviously like I'm going to two of the same cities you've obviously been in Melbourne for, but it's like, oh, where am I staying this time? Where am I staying there? And then you sort of like zoom out a bit because it's like in Brisbane, I want to go to see to the Australia Zoo. Yeah. Which is um, Steve Irwin Zoo. Yeah. And now run by his children. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Right. But I was like, oh my God. And then you see the town names around it. Because you know, I'm obsessed with um, Cobra Pido. I'm sorry, what did you say to me? Coba Pido. That there's a I whole... don't think you should say that in that accent because it really sounds like you're going to say a different word the second time. Pete, oh no. <laughs> no, they're not like that there. They all live underground. What is it? And um, it's it's a mi- opal mining town. Right. Okay. And um, if you go outside, the flies just land on your face. So that's where they have to wear the hats with the corks on it. You know, from the like... Why would anybody live there? That's a, it's a, They live in fly town. It was on Instant Hotel. Do you remember that Australian reality show that we got during lockdown on Netflix? No. And oh my 
God, Catherine. Okay. I was having a breakup. Oh, my God. The, the perfect time to watch Australian reality I TV. I was really busy, like, really busy re-watching fucking Shit's Creek, Instant wasn't Instant Hotel. It's hosted by one woman who is a hotel expert slash TV presenter. Right. And Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen. No! He's back. <laughs> Maybe he's back, 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 back He's again? back on Australian reality TV. So what he was doing was he would host, there was, it was basically like four in a bed, the bread and breakfast show. Yeah. And they would host people at I've their... I've never seen that either. So it's like a families who run bed and breakfasts and they compete and they have people, all the other bed and breakfast people stay at theirs for a weekend and then they vote for their favourite bed and breakfast. So like, but they're called instant hotels here, not bed and breakfasts. Mm. So oh, they're called instant hotels. But they like pick duos to like host it. So like the the Sydney B and B um is hosted by a babe and Bondi. Babe's the mum, Bondi's the daughter, named after the boy. And no joke, <laughs> it's incredible. Behave. And obviously they're white, but they've got like so many Buddhas everywhere. <laughs> like it's like it's like a full on temple. We know We're these babe women. and Bondi. We know these women. Never been abroad. Oh, we've been to indonesia but just at the white places and they're just so amazing and then there's a couple that are in cobra Podo, okay and they I wish have you wouldn't say it like that cobra Podo, and um that it's actually better it's just pure aridness and then they make them go golfing it's their fun activity and um, every time they like do anything the they're just covered in flies it's no. Oh, I don't like that. That's and then there's a couple that have this American Roadhouse instant hotel in like the wine valleys of like Western Australia. It looks incredible. An American what now? Like, you know when people like do a wacky hotel, like a themed hotel. Right. And they've decided that in the middle of like, I don't know, let's just say the Yarra Valley, but I don't know where it is. Um, they're going to have like an American style diner. <laughs> Oh no. Hotel. So surrounded no. by these amazing no. vineyards and vistas. No. And their theming is Welcome to the 1950s. No. <laughs> so it's like the black and white checkered floor. Like you can sleep in the Marilyn Monroe room or in a. In I bet a, you sleep pretty a, well in there. In an old car. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was rude. They give you the Marilyn drugs. A deep sleep. Uh, <laughs> a deep sleep in the Marilyn room. <laughs> it's so Boy, amazing. Like, and they're the sweetest couple. Like He's got like the mullet, like not like the new mullet, the the first the classic the, the long the, back the, like, long at the back to the point where like he probably got it at school and it's just never gone away oh, wow. like it feels like he was born with it that's impressive it's such a and good show in many ways aren't we all born with a mullet like those of us with hair have usually got like a little bit long bits at the back and sort of short you're at the front. so right and babies have that bold spot as well yeah but i was born with um lots of blonde hair and then it all just fell out immediately and I was bold for like two years. But that always happens. Everyone loses their baby hair, don't they? Yeah, but some people grow up back quicker. Like I was like, I was toddling around walking, still bold. Whoa. Like, hello. And they were like, why is that baby so big? And like saying hello, but with no hair still. That's quite nice. Um, my, oh, well, actually that's not my story to tell, but Ellen couldn't, <laughs> could talk before she could walk. She was like a slow walker. <gasps> Um, slow to walk and no uh, that's creepy she walks very fast because she's gay obviously yeah um but she yeah so <laughs> apparently <laughs> once her grandma came over and before she could say anything ellen was like no grandma i'm not walking yet <laughs> To be able to say that is to so be creepy. Before you're stepping is crazy. Because there's that famous joke like a child should never be asked to be wiped. Like if you're old enough to ask to have your nappy changed and have a wipe, then you shouldn't be wiped. Yikes. You know? Because that's just creepy. Yikes. It's like those kids whose memories start too early. Like my friend Gwyneth remembers being changed. Oh no! She remembers no. lying lying next no, to her stop cousin. It, stop it, stop it, stop it. And having her nappy chain. <laughs> also, sometimes you see a kid that's like. <laughs> sometimes you see a kid. We saw a kid being being um, breastfed recently, and I swear to God, his feet were kicking her knees. No. Like, yeah, you're like that's a no. It's Obviously, her a... body had choice. Obviously, her body no, had choice. No. <laughs> no. I'm... We're feminists. We're feminists. Oh well, I think that's. I think that's actually. Um... But it's the same thing. If you can ask for the nipple. You can't have the nipple. You know? You can't. Do you know what I mean? You have. You can't. Let's use our words and order some lunch. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, let's just do that. It's time. Uh, it's time. Uh, also, at some point, uh, 
Sorry. You must be aware that like you. I mean, I think you can tell I wasn't breastfed, but ever. I uh, know. I spent some time on the nipple. Definitely spent some time. I'm on making up for last time now, my what? <laughs> oh no, your poor mother. <laughs> oh no, not with her. <laughs> no, obviously not. Obviously I'm not. Gay. That'd be mental. That'd be fucking mental. Let's change the topic. Right, hundred percent. So what you been? What you been? You've been, <laughs> you been, you been enjoying your pants. What are you up to? You know what, Catherine? Ugh. What are you doing for Christmas? <laughs> We'd love to know what the big plans are this year. Let's stress ourselves out now. And then deal with the I rest later on. I actually can't do Christmas as early with you because you are too much. So let's talk instead for Christmas. Come on. It's a lot. Let's, a just, save it. let's just save it till November. It's a tricky time um, of year. Hey, weren't you going to tell... Oh, that's what we were going to talk about, eating out. Um, But no, a different kind. A different kind. Don't, don't. I was just going to say that I know that it's a... Tr Helen, come back I to me. I want to talk about it. Let's I love about talking about our food issues on the podcast. <laughs> Okay, well, fine. You come up with a topic if it's not our food. No, no, I want to talk about the food I'm issues. just going to say that the food in Melbourne is fucking amazing and the food culture here is unbelievable, but... Don't tell them what you've done. You've already spent through your per diem. Oh, yeah, I spent my per diem, but We're I spent... two weeks in. And can I just say, you might not remember this, but last year when I came to Australia and I spent through my per diem for Sydney and Perth really quickly... You were like, blah, blah, blah. oh, no, my first time being invited to be a comedian in Australia. Oh, sorry, Irish. No, no, no Wait, no. shrill, shrill. Pog Mahon. Slauncher. Okay. Slauncher. 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 The right, that one? Yeah, it's just not chur, it's cha. Cha. Slauncher. My first time coming to oh, Australia. God, so far off. I was basically hell. Here's the thing. Who is... I use my THs. I don't think you do. I think I do. Mm, you show enough now, but you don't in general. I definitely do. Right. They were... They gave me my per diem. I was so careful with it. I did not spend through I it didn't at all. That. I was so careful. I had money left over at the end. You literally did. Someone can go back and find it. Fine. Let me say this, though. You have fucked it this I year. I fucked it because my girlfriend was here, so we went out for so many gorgeous meals. And I spent so much money on mohair. I bought two mohair jumpers <laughs> and I'm not sorry. I'm a You've mohair had your nails girl done. I've had my nails You've... done. Mama got crazy. And then. My per diem is still standing. And I want you that on You got paid it late. You got paid it late. Yeah, late. I fucked up. And I got paid late. Fuck you. But still, my per diem is standing. And I, there's a reputation I that may. I'm bad with my money. Only because you tell us what you do with your money and it's always bad. On magical trips Usually. to go see Hitler's Eagle's Nest. That was close and I've got a book to go back. But still. <sighs> Helen, all I was trying to say was just that it's been really nice eating out loads, but I do find it quite stressful yeah, to I... not have any like regularity with food. Yeah. And then I overthink everything and I I get kind of choice. Um, I get overwhelmed, but also I get, I feel like ugh, I feel disconnected from my body and like I can't tell if I'm hungry or not. And also I find it really hard when you're ordering as a group and I get overwhelmed. And yeah. now um, I'm just going to cook for myself for a week so I feel like a normal girl again. And I support that a hundred percent. I think, but I realise that that's such a incredibly niche, privileged problem. I've had too many meals at restaurants, and now I don't feel normal. I think everyone will understand that too. Like, not even if it's eating at restaurants, just the fact that if you're on like a holiday and you're with a group of people, if you're like renting like an Airbnb somewhere, like you're no longer in charge of what you eat for breakfast, mm. lunch and dinner because everything is like, are we buying this box of cereal? Are we getting this in for breakfast? And suddenly all your meals become this thing that everyone's around. And if you're someone who's struggled with a food issue at any point in your life, like mm. no matter how big or small, you can't help but feel slightly judged sometimes or like you're making like the wrong choice or you've got to like pick what you think people would like or the group order for the table. It's just totally just, out of control. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. so out of control. Yeah, And it's so tricky because you also, it's hard. I know we spoke about this last week a bit. I don't know if it was in the main episode of the extras, but just sort of like if to be in a group of people and not feel left out, not unincluded anyone, but also not to not be involved for, like you can't not go to everything. Yeah. Like I have not gone to a lot of the meals. You've been riding that sore throat for quite a week now. I'm thriving yeah i'll bet you are to be i haven't spent my per diem because i've stayed indoors for eight days i am thriving on vocal rest also because yeah and can you hear it she really needs it <laughs> don't fake cough now don't you fake cough at me don't you fake cough <coughs> for god's sake i did i did have a very sore throat really 
It's mainly through me yelling at the Melbourne audiences because there's like no Disney adults That's here. And I'm just like genuinely You get really off. mad about that, huh? Hey, maybe I get mad be- about it if after the show, these like fucking Australian girls come up to me going like, we actually really love Disney. And I'm like, there was literally 15 of us in the whole crowd. You couldn't have said. And you couldn't have said. You couldn't have said. Maybe our guest will be a Disney adult. I got Dennis, so angry the day on stage. Maybe they will I be. screamed and a bit of piss came out. I'm not joking. Right. Let's bring on our guest. I think please, I'm losing. Please, no, no, no. I think I'm, I'm losing. That. It's a no for my, me. Um, wait, no, no, I've got one more thing about food before we bring on our guest. Well, just super, super quick. Go on. Because I've just realised the time. Um, uh, no, actually, it's not important. I'll do it next week. <laughs> that good, eh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I thought it was actually too big of a thing. Next week it is. Please welcome our tremendous guest, Reese Nicholson. Nicholson. Woo! Australia's own. Hello, it's me, Catherine Bohart, and I'm going on tour. My show is called Again With Feelings. And oh my gosh, you guys, I would absolutely love if you bought a ticket in advance because um, people keep sending me emails about the places that aren't selling well and it's very stressful. So I'm doing MacFest in Wales. I'm doing Brighton, Aldershot, Edinburgh, Glasgow, York, Newcastle, Norwich, Winchester, Cambridge, Oxford, Bath, Birmingham, Manchester, Leeds, Liverpool. I'm now doing Bolton. I'm, we're adding Bolton. Sheffield, Exeter, Corsham, Bristol, Coventry, Guildford, Portsmouth, Swindon, Dublin, and then I'm back in London. The point is, I have a lot of tickets to sell, and I'm not, I'm not really sleeping. So, um, grab a ticket. Hey, grab a ticket at katherinebohart.com. You'd go, wouldn't you, Helen? I've been. I loved it. Have you been? Leicester. Oh, you went to a work in progress. Yeah. Yes, that's true. But it's going to be better than that even, I hope. And also, you're going to have the best time in Bolton. It's my favourite accent in the UK. Bolton. Bolton. Hello. I guess I'll find out what it is when I get there. Yeah. Please come to the tour. <laughs> look at me, baby. Don't look, look at me. Oh. Look at oh. me. Ooh, oh, she's jiggling. She's jiggling her titties. They're jiggling their titties at each other. Hello. Reese Jiggles and Heather, hell are you, my love? I'm great. How are you? You look like you have reached your final form. You look divine. Oh, the final divine. evolution this of the Pokemon. Oh, dude, my gosh. I, when I'm embalmed, this would be nice. Like, yeah. when I'm laying in state and stunning, people come and look stunning, at me like Stunning, stunning, stunning. It's um, like, wow, Drag Race money suits you, honey. Oh, yeah, and I make so much money yes! off that show. They definitely don't know that they make you famous that I don't pay you heaps. Oh. oh. No, I get paid the correct amount. Good. I get paid the correct <laughs> amount. Okay. But I wouldn't say it's like, you know, well, it's like it's TV money. Yeah. yeah. It's stupid. It's stupid amount for, of money for, our for, jobs. What, for what we sure. do. It's but, enough to go on like a world cruise if you say where. Yeah. But oh, cruises. Would you like a cruise? It's More dream. than it's anything dream. at the it's moment. I have got woman. so into it. See, I've worked on, I've performed on cruises before. <gasps> How can you get me in? Absolutely. Like genuinely. Pino cruises. Yes, really? yes, yes, yes. Yeah, they do comedy cruises and they she get into that. open water and they do donuts in international waters so they can sit, so they can open the casino. <laughs> and then you do a couple shows and they're, they're not bad. I will do them again. Will you? But like on the, the way money down? Is in, yeah, on the, yeah. yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But it's no, like doing working men's clubs in the UK. Yeah. Like. We call them RSLs here. Like the what does the RSL stand RSL for? RSL stands for Returned Servicemen's League. Oh God, okay. And they're kind of they these they were kind of like you know we're like men who have been to war. We yeah. go and talk to each other, and now they're just kind of a lot of fruit machines and and that's um, just the comics. Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not those bars. I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> Come on now. Wait. So they you go on it. How many shows do you do a day on piano? Um, so you only have to do, on these comedy ones, you do two shows, but one of them is like your headline show. So it's like 35, 40 minutes. You're allowed to say whatever you want, but you can't say cunt. That's the only thing. Really? Um, you're not allowed to make jokes about the captain. Those are the rules. Oh. Um, do not disrespect the captain. You have to say it's a ship, not a boat. Yes, that there's like people, weird little maritime people are funny about that, and really? they're also really funny about gendering boats. Yeah, like you think that like humans have a problem with like the binary. <laughs> it's the bloody mariners. Really? Gender dysphoria involved in being <laughs> yeah. a boat. Really? Oh, it's insane. Yeah. What do they have to be? Huh? Oh fuck Her. off. She's a lady. Oh. I love. We should. Put our money to get our TV drag race money, and yeah. we should we buy should a boat, and it should be a they, money. they, them boat. They, them the boat. first they, them boat. The oh. the people of the seas will be and we livid. smash like a gin and tonic over it. It goes of, like, sailing around. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. And I'd love instead it. of like a lady with her tits out, sort of being the master of the boat, it's just someone with a mullet. It's just May Martin. <laughs> yes! yes, it's just it's May. May. We just call it the May Martin. That's and it's on its May Martin voyage. 
They're here all week, my loves. They're here all week. I can't believe you've done everything in your career. You've wow. cruised and you've been on TV. Be, I will be back. I will be yeah. back. Like, because you do, so you do your show and then they also have these like little gala things. It's like, and it's quite, it's not bad. It's like being on a little like group tour. As long as the good, you, you've you got mates on the ship yeah, with you. Like, it's but like isn't doing, it also only good if your gig goes well? Yes. Like I always be- ask, the person who books me on them is a mate of mine. And she always makes sure to put me on the last night. I don't know if I said, but she puts me on the last night because then you can be kind of anonymous the whole yes, heaven on earth. trip. Heaven on earth. And you can just be at the whereas if you're headlining on the first night, oh, you are very famous to oh, everyone on the ship. Oh my God. And if it goes well, it's still also annoying because yeah. Yeah. you're trapped on a hotel in the middle of the ocean yeah. with people going like, I've got one for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh I I remember when this happened. Um <laughs> whereas if you're on the last night, you just do you you're back back to your cabin and you um, disembark, the, disembark next day. the next morning at 7 a.m. Whoa. Wow. That is yeah. my, uh, genuinely that is like a nightmare I would have. Yeah. It's That's not ideal. But you horrific. can get food all around. That's not my dream. It's, yeah, maybe not, it but is it's a buffet 24-7. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, if you are in the context of we're in the middle of the ocean right now and yeah. they made this. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, fair enough. Like it's, it's yeah, you, it's good like. It's good if you're not if you're just like junk fooding and just kind of like good burgers and that sort of thing. And Look at the light in your eyes just sparkling yeah. away. Yeah. And I also I actually, yeah, I think Helen, you would like it. I've got the vibe <laughs> of someone that could like be like no like like really red forehead, like mm-hmm. super burn, mm-hmm. yeah. like always insisting on going for cigarettes, but the wind oh. is too strong, but relighting it. I become a <laughs> chain smoker on a cruise ship. Yeah, really? Because, because you kind of just have to fill time. Yeah. Like I was a smoker for years and then I quit. And then as soon as I'm on a cruise ship, I just start <laughs> up again. Well, it's the rules of the sea. It's but the also is it yeah, that you fine. have to go to a certain place to smoke. So if you go all that way, you're like, well, I'm not just having one. Well, and it just gives you, you have so much time to fill. You have, so, because also that when you're, I think being a passenger is a different experience as a, when you're, you're technically working on the ship yeah. and so you can yeah. drink and things. But you're kind of not allowed. There's certain th- like I don't think you're allowed to use the zip line, for example, <laughs> or like I think you're not really Sorry, allowed. There's a zip to, line. There's on a zip the- line. Catherine, you don't Shit. understand. It's a moving city, and I feel like you've got the wrong idea. Wrong. The wrong <laughs> idea Looking about right. how amazing these cruise ships are. Well, some of them have theme parks on them. Yeah. What? Some of them are theme park, but then also some of them are like I don't work on the I've not worked on like kind of family ones. I think they're the ones that have all the cool stuff though. Like mm-hmm. I do, and I'm not making this up. This sounds like something I made up. Uh, they had a little cinema cinema in there, and I walked past one night, and they were playing the movie. Like this proves to me that they have a sense of humor. They were playing Perfect Storm. That's good it's stuff. Good That's stuff. good stuff. Wait. Titanic would have been braver, but yeah. I respect it. Yeah, I yeah. Really it's still the ocean being angry. Or Jaws. Yes. Wait, fun. what's Perfect Storm? Perfect Storm is a George Clooney vehicle. I think so. Wasn't uh, it? It was George Clooney, wasn't it? When yeah. they, and they're on that relatively small when, ship. When of... he was still working out his ER into movie stardom. I'm, I'm checking. I'm checking. It was like Fisherman in a Storm. Yeah. Great. The Perfect Storm. <laughs> the Perfect Storm. And it's storm. like little, little ship. Which I'd imagine the CGI would make us feel. Was sad it a little now. ship or a little boat? It was a little boat. Now, Sam. there we See, go. I'm We've got to be I'm careful. Too, and the little boat in big waves. Kind George of. Clooney, it is George Clooney, and it, and that's who I was getting confused with, because it's also Mark Wahlberg. What's yes. This? The fact that they've, I mean, of course they've met, but the fact that they've spent three months together. Wait, I'm adding drown. this to my list of things I have to watch. A deadly storm rises in the North Atlantic and the lives of a bunch of commercial fishermen are in serious danger. They must do everything in their power to survive. Wait, this sounds way up my street. Yeah, I'll link I've had up. two recommendations here from a Kiwi and an Australian of things to watch. Go First, on. someone Australian. I still haven't Googled it, so I don't know what it is. Something called Blinky Bill. Blinky Bill? <laughs> what that? is it? Blinky Bill is very important to us. No, I don't think it is because the name doesn't... Okay, No, no, on. it is. Same it's more, like, same It's more. very... It's it, like if you're... Particularly my age, it was like on TV a lot. But 25. it was like old... I'm 25. I'm, I'm 22, thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> the, it, it was a TV show that I think 
think was big in the 60s and 70s and then they remade it in the 90s. But it's this um, mischievous little <laughs> koala called Blinky Bill and he wears red overalls and one of the things is kind of down. And, he is. Um, oh, it's like a nip-slipped koala. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> a genderqueer busybody. <laughs> what's, what's his girlfriend's name? Not girlfriend but, like, best friend. But there's, ten- there's like, you know there's when tension. they put sexual tension, yeah, yeah, sexual yeah. tension but they're children? Um, <laughs> like a will they, won't they, but they're children? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like they'll probably get married when they're old. Like if they were to do an episode where they jump forward, they're probably married. Yes, 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 I think okay. her name was like Gumnut or something. Like <laughs> Gumnut. Oh, Gumnut the koala. Wait, wait Simon, do you remember this? Did you have it in Tasmania? Yeah, my friend's mum was the voice of Blinky Bill. <gasps> Shut up. Okay, can they hear walked... you on the podcast? Sorry, are you unable to turn that mic on? Oh, I'm so sorry. sorry. You have to say that. Sorry, could you just say that again? Are you okay. Simon? My friend's, my friend Danny Moore's mum is the voice of Blinky Bill. Which, which to find out that this Whoa. mischievous young boy was played by a woman is, Scandalous. I mean, they can do anything now. But the, <laughs> Isn't Bart Simpson now. played by a woman? Nancy yeah, Cartwright. Nancy Cartwright. Oh, I met yeah. her once um, in at Edinburgh Fringe. She was producing a comedian there and it was wild. What? She was over, I was in the Abattoir Artist Bar. What a hellish name for a hellish place. Yeah. yeah. And she They was, do a good espresso martinis there really in do. all fairness to them. They do yeah, yeah. make drinks better than other places. Yes. They have to. They're yeah. hellscape. Yeah. And, it and it's kind of, you know, if you can find a little corner that no one's Can I say know. really good for outdoor smoking seating? Yes. At the abattoir. You've got to look at the positives. Look so, at Blinky oh Bill. Now, this is also the three generations of it because I'm now looking, there's a 3D, like this is what all kids' shows look like now. This <gasps> kind of... Yes. So the one that we watched, that one there, that's the one that we watched as a kid. That like, I can see the one that looks the 90s, like the one that looks like the equivalent of like British 90s. What was his girlfriend's name? Um... What was her I name? really want it, it to be gum nut. nut. I want it to be gum nut. Oh my god, it's so cute. It's and adorable. It, and it, it was hugely popular. Oh my god, it's so How could sweet. it not be? And they would often in the there was a movie of it that was made in like the 70s or the 80s and they and it was kind of what they're doing here they animated on top of real photograph feel real <laughs> film like that you do you maybe they did this in the uk Whoa. as well there so australian period... budgets have always been quite yeah like, yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we're only getting the money that you send us so um, <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, what was that's very the yeah we need the name they look we like they the all name. live in east london also just to like <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming everyone's googling along or watching the video along with us but like nutsy Nazi. 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 What's oh that God. amongst? That's so I mean, funny. this isn't helpful for the podcast, but just below. The woman is holding up her skirt. But what's happening below? See, there's a. No! On yes! The second second no, row. No. Over. Over. No. What's that? <laughs> um, I think Can they see this on the screen at home? No. Probably not. No. I reckon that if you. Um... Blinky Bill human girls no that's google blinky that bill simon. girl simon close that down and you will see an image come up that i'm gonna say is not a, a blinky bill appropriate yeah I would also agree. Catherine, the more i see this the more i feel like i've seen this now and I think did this come to the, the uk eye. that's a tr- i don't know i didn't live there when i grew up and the uh <sighs> and there was this old man called um wombo that that was like and a wombat he was a wombat but his name was mr wombat and uh they were running out of names, I think. And Blinky <laughs> would call him Wombo. And every time, and this is a better impression than it's going to sound. Here we go. But people listening will, and he'd always go, don't call me Wombo. And <laughs> oh, that, that was, was spot the, on. Was that kind of all right? Okay, yeah, yeah Simon's, Simon's over the moon. Impressed. Yeah. Simon's impressed. Oh, that's I mean, a bit of fun. I was no Blinky Bill, his friend's mum. Yeah. Wow, he would know. He would know. Wow, so a real David move. Yeah. It's David, actually. Okay, Dave, chill out. Yeah. Blinky right. Bill, I actually want to watch it. It seems adorable because the, these people after my show were like incredibly passionate about Blinky Bill. Okay, so that's So I wrote it down as something potential. to watch. And then the other thing I had recommended, which I have already Back watched. Back to four. <laughs> How do you know what she... <laughs> you got to watch one to three to get what's going on. <laughs> Back to sluts four. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> Yay. The franchise really kicks off from from four to And you 12. think it's four the number, but it's actually four. four. <laughs> and it's nothing and to do it with comes. to be clear, it's nothing to do with anal. Their front door does not work. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. they haven't called the landlord to get the keys replaced. But they are sluts. They're slutty, but they really cannot do house admin. Behave. What is the other one? What was the other thing? Um Heavenly Creatures. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Had never this? even heard of it, Catherine. Kate Winslet, you'll It's incredible. Kate Winslet, um, 
with an with Melanie. a Kiwi accent, Mel- Melanie Linsky. Mm-hmm. Um, I know who Melanie yeah, Linsky yeah. is. Yeah. Did you know that she's a Kiwi? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. She I... used to be on um, the L Word, which is when I first mm-hmm. saw her. Oh my god. So they play Heavenly Creatures. It's a famous story in New Zealand about these yeah. girls that were like classic. I think we as queer people we had these people like best friend that you absolutely were in love with. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they murder a man together, and it's a true nope. story. No. They Mom. murder her mum. Yeah, together. that's right. As Both as teenage queer girls. Narratives. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's all it's very like did they didn't they did they didn't and do they, they end and up it's in love? Horny. It's like a bit like and it's Melanie Linsky. And yeah. Are they smoochy? I think there's a bit there's of that. There's one. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to give it away. <gasps> I'm, in, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. saw a show where someone referenced it and the whole audience was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was thinking TV like, oh, film. I hate it when you TV don't get the film. Film, film. Let's watch it. And on it our kind of, it was, I've already watched it. I literally went home from the show. I watched the first hour of it. I woke up early the next day and watched the second 40 minutes. And it's kind of Kate Winslet's. <laughs> it's it, her first like, film. It's her first film. Remember when films were an hour and 40 minutes? I said so. I said so. I said so. Remember? When you could like do two of an evening? Yeah. This is a, yeah, COVID. Um, <laughs> the, Not a six hour evening. We like, this is a huge thing between my husband and I that he doesn't mind a lot. Like I don't mind a lot, but I need to be in the right mood. Yeah. Like you need to catch me at exactly the right, like yeah. stars need to be aligned in a certain way for me to go, yes, let's watch a three and a half hour movie. Yeah. Like so if rare. I'm a bit grumpy, I'm not going to the movies to watch a two and a half hour no. movie. No. Unless the experiment of the movie is... See how fucking long this is? Like, if I'm it's watching a movie and, like, we could have wrapped this up. Yeah. I love a, I love an hour and a half yes, please. comedy. Because it can be done. If we can do mm-hmm. a stand-up show in an hour. Right. If and even done, then, like, I think that's too if long. I can talk about my whole, oh, it should be 40. 40 minutes. standards should be 40 minutes. I agree. But if we can wrap up family trauma in 45, you, I'm sorry, you yeah. can shorten that And then film. a bit of crowd work to fill it out at the Don't end. Don't mind if we do. Sometimes <laughs> it happens. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying to Reese the other day when we were at a gig, which is like, I know a gig is going badly. If at like minute 52, I'm like, so what's your name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if in the last 10 minutes you're introducing new characters from the audience, you- things have not gone well and you're filling time. But don't you ever think like you're on minute 52, wrap it up. Everyone else is going to be glad to like. I think maybe we were, we were saying 42. Because I think. Yeah, I think 42. So yeah, I think yeah. so too. If you're selling a show with an hour. 50 minutes is fine. I agree. My but... show is running long, so I'm actually finishing it earlier most nights because I think people would rather get out mm. before you hit the hour yeah, than hitting it. It's not a challenge to fill the time. 100%. Yeah. For sure 100%. they don't want it. Reese, um, you live here? I do. What should we be doing? Sorry, I mean, high pressure question. No, no, question. but this is the thing, because I used to live in Sydney for a long time. <gasps> I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> Reese, and I've heard Reese, of it. Reese, Reese, can I tell you? Reese, Reese, <laughs> can yes, I tell you? Yes. I've been to the Taronga Zoo and, oh, and, best zoo in the country. and I saw a possum on the street yeah. in Sydney. This yeah. is the thing that you don't get. See, the way that Australians go to London and are just oh, like so fascinated by seeing like, a fo- like I know that oh, foxes, yeah, foxes in London are a problem, but we yeah. see them and we're like, oh my no. God, because it's like seeing... We grew up watching like the animals of farthing wood, like seeing a fox. Yeah. Like... Oh my god, I'm pretty sure I live on a fox's street now. It's not the other way around. Yeah, like it's mm-hmm. there's so many of them where I live that it's perturbing. Do you have confident foxes around you? Oh just my god, ones? very ballsy. I've got one that looks me in the eye. They're so cute. I love. I'm a a big part of my algorithm on Instagram is v- videos of baby fox, like puppy really? kind of puppy fox. Cubs? Yeah, cubs? Cubs? fox cubs, fox cubs, kittens. Um, <laughs> uh, kind of at people's like English doors, just like, mm. yeah. and they're so cute. And then they grow up and they look kind of sinister. Kind of, they are. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Reece, you're right. I've... If you're a sl- if you're a fox, if you're a sly fox, you're kind of. A yeah, sly. yeah. I agree. I want to show you mine algorithm. Mine is about Australian seals with learning difficulties. Because okay. I've basically been following. Is seals a code the... word for something, or are they? No, no. no, okay, no. Seal, the seal from Tasmania. Tasmania. Were they clubbed in the head? No, 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 no. But they think they're human. It's so silly. And they're always on land. (laughs) They're always on land, like flopping around. And every single night, the Tasmanian police have to be like, right, Neil, back in the water. Off you go. And they're so not built. No. Like to... to... It's cruel. It's cruel. 
They look inbred and yet not. <laughs> but again, a baby feel. <laughs> Adorable. So insane, insane so the size cute. of the eyes. So cute. The, but what? So Sorry. So live, when I lived in Sydney, there was plenty of things I could have, because Sydney's full of tourist attractions, mm-hmm. whereas Melbourne's tourist attraction is Melbourne. Like as in. I know what you mean. Do you know what I mean? Like it's quite, there's nothing to, it's like you can't, you can't look at, Melbourne skyline and be like, that's Melbourne. Like we don't have anything you can go and look at and go, wow. But like kind of restaurants is the thing, like it's restaurants thing. and things to do. Yeah. Like, best ones. Let's see if we've, if um, we've eaten at any of them. There, The best restaurant in the country is in Melbourne. It's called Attica. Um, and it is genuine. Attica. Like it's in the top 50 restaurants in the world. Wow. Like gets Attica. voted every year. Um, and it's this amazing, and it's like, it's, you know, it's a bit, it's a fine, it's similar to what's the place in, Sweden that everyone not Sweden but like oh like not no it's kind of like, like no mo- like that kind of of like it's yeah. an experience it's like it's five hundred dollars a head and dollars and you're dollars us? yeah let's you're all go come on Sarah, go on come on <laughs> really no because but it's in between our birthdays yeah and as a birthday present for you you could you take me for that, I, I don't know I was sort of doing that. That's um, okay. <laughs> uh, I did something weird the other day that my friend was pointing at me and I just put my mouth around their finger because I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> I've done that before. Yeah, people just, do not like oh, it. Oh, she, it was Okum's mouth. She hated it. Yeah, people yeah, really don't like it. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's yeah. a huge evasion of privacy yeah. if it was a workplace. Uh, it's a, cu- it it's a cuddle well, from the mouth. You point, it's rude. Yeah. And now they know. <laughs> you point at me, I'm going to I'm gonna Sorry. put my mouth around that. <laughs> um, and that's not a euphemism for anything. We're just... Uh, married yeah attica is great yeah. um there's a place in the city called gimlet that's like these are all kind of fine like not fine dining Ooh. but kind of like experience you places gimlet um, isn't that where the obamas went yes okay yes yes yes, yes. how yes, would you yes, know yes, yes. that because another pair of gays had just been and we're like <laughs> the obamas went there but don't get the pasta so, so um, i was at this is, i was at a friend's house that night who is a restaurateur and he had friends there that were <gasps> restaurateurs and we're all like having dinner and stuff. There was other people there as well, but we we're all having dinner and things. And uh, it turned out to be the guy that owns Gimlet and um, Andrew McConnell. And we were like, oh, how's like Gimlet going? And he said, oh, the Obamas are there tonight. And the table went, why are what you, do you here? Ma- what are you he- why are you here? But then he kind of made a good point that he was like, what's that? He, he trusts his staff and like, he th- but what's that? what's that experience for like, you know, when you see some, even if someone that you really idolize across yeah. the room, what do you get? Like I, David Byrne is like my favorite person from the band Talking Heads. Yeah. Um, and I saw him across a room Why? at a big, like I was at. I don't know anything about him. That wasn't a, uh, um, attack. That he, was a question. Uh, he just makes really, I really like Talking Heads music mm-hmm. and he's like in his seventies now and he still makes like really great. And he's just very cool. Yeah. And he's like. I don't know. He just like everything he does is very like artful and very like he releases music in a weird way and he's never gotten bad. Okay, amazing. Does that make That's sense? That's a great like, idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, he, uh, I saw him, I was at an after party for something and I saw him across the room and a friend was like, you should go and talk to him. And I was like, what's that experience? Like, I'm going to go up and say, hello, you're my favorite mm-hmm. thing. Uh, and he'll go, thank you. And even if he's the nicest he possibly can, I'm like the tenth person to say that to him. That yeah, time. I was talking about this recently because I did a TV show with a big, like a, like a big name comic, and mm-hmm. I was watching. It was Graham Norton. Mm-hmm. You know Graham Norton. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know him, but he said my name on radio once. Amazing. <gasps> that totally counts. Yeah. But I know him very well. I think, it, mm. and I, I don't know whether or not this is speaking out of turn, but like watching, he is so kind to everyone mm-hmm. he meets. But also, I found it quite stressful to talk to him because I felt like, God, were everyone today? It's their first time meeting mm-hmm. Graham Norton, and mm-hmm. he's just trying to get mm-hmm. like through the working hours. And you're like, it's a lot of pressure. It must feel so stressful to be everyone's biggest moment. Yeah. Well, I think this is a thing that really fascinates me about. Um, my employer RuPaul yeah. is that there are these kind of like stories about him. Like people kind of have this opinion about him that he's kind of cold and aloof, Yeah, but he's not, he's at work. Like yeah. as in, this is what I've witnessed. At yeah. Like yeah. as in, you know, he's like a, a man in his sixties dressed as a woman convincingly in her twenties Yeah, <laughs> and he's tired. And like, I think yeah. it's, it's proved to me yeah. whenever drag queens have been kind of yeah. like, um, kind of saying like yeah he said to me on camera uh, off camera like you know save it for the camera that to me is someone who's never been on a tv show before yeah and doesn't know that yeah we're all here to work and we're just trying to 
yeah get yeah. done today and and also someone can be like warm and welcoming and loving but doesn't need to be talking to like everyone at all times oh, you know like we've you all can... been on a panel yeah. show before where like the host has an earpiece in and you're talking about things like you're just yeah. chatting and then you see them kind of go yeah yeah and i remember the first time that ever happened to me i went oh my god i'm so sorry and now i realize oh no the the people in the control room mm-hmm. are just talking to them right yeah. now and yeah. they can't talk to me anymore and also like I have seen people who are effusively kind, incredibly generous, like so attentive to one another. But if they so much as like, if anyone catches them on their one day off, that's the that's, that's the, the story. story. And you're like, come on. And I also think, or just on their phone for a second. Yeah. My, my yeah. theory is that if someone is very, very nice on stage, they're usually the worst. Mm. Of <laughs> that's so interesting. Like, yeah, that's. But so it's true. It's it's so true. The people that the the famous people that we know mm. that are like in the media like and look at all these great things i'm doing and we're raising money for all this charity they're usually the greatest monsters of all. Uh-huh. And then <laughs> oh my like, god i wanted your name so bad but i know we can't well, i mean they're the obvious but like they're no, the very no, public no. ones <laughs> like you know but like but yeah. then the people that are usually the worst on stage I often like the nicest. The nicest. Ones. That's so like, true. They're the, um, like Fan that's Brady. So true. Little shout out to Fan Brady. He's got a little bit about that in their new show. Ah, yeah, and it's super good. Even about James Corden. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I once the served James Corden. Example. Yeah, yeah. What? I used to serve him coffees every morning because I was Did working you work at in the. What's <laughs> Wasn't that the big story? There was a big oh, story. Oh no! This is before he was. This is before like Gavin and Stacey. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He was doing, or maybe no, it was after Gavin and Stacey. But I was working in the espresso bar at the Royal National Theatre and he was doing a play there called One Man, Two Governors and he used to serve him coffees. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he was fine. Yeah. Right. I think it was before the storm. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. But you know, do you know, everyone knows like the famous, like whether it's about him or not, but the plane story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. people the know the The bag helping thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. wait, what? I don't know this one. The... Well, who even knows if this is true? Yeah, that's the thing. Who freaking knows? But, but it's like I think one of someone put it on the Reddit rest. or someone put it on Twitter or something. Mm-hmm. Right. But um, he was on a plane uh, and he was in like, you know, they were in the nice bit of the plane and there was this woman with a baby next to him the whole time was crying. And they were maybe going from New York to London or something. Like it wasn't a huge yeah, yeah, yeah. stretch, but it was like, uh, and he was just, and the woman kept kind of throughout the flight going like, sorry, but like, God, the baby. And, and he was like, no, it's totally fine. Don't worry about it. And he just sat with headphones on and watched movies the whole time yeah. and blah, blah, blah. Then right at the end, she's up and she's got the baby and she's getting back and she says to him, and the person was thinking the whole time, like, he's being so, no-, like, you know, this is yeah, baby screaming next to him yeah. in first class and he's being totally fine. Um, he's being a human. Uh, yeah. And then as she's getting back to him, she was like, can you at least fucking help me get the bags down? And it became clear that that was his wife and child. <gasps> yeah. And he literally just, like, was letting her do everything. All. And all who knows it. if it's true? Yeah. A fun, a fun, a fun proviso <gasps> with this story. things get told and told and told and they get taken out of context. Like, who freaking knows? Who knows? Who knows? I who knows? We do. You know. The part that I find implausible is that she didn't stab him during yes. the show. The, <laughs> like, I'm like, surely if she's his actual wife, he's dead now. I've said this yeah, to you yeah. so many times. You cannot kill in a closed space Mm. because that's how you end up with shows like the murder on the orient express which Mm -hmm. is probably a book first terrible place to commit a murder yeah you're right terrible that is the learning from that it's so stupid (laughs) race always commit in an open space like heavenly creatures okay and that's a callback nice that was good do you want to do a listener problem yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i think we should (laughs) before we do that what kind of advice giver would you consider yourself um i think i'm a after a couple of wines, I got all types of thoughts. Yeah. But I think I'm usually a... My husband is a very good... You know about my husband, Kai? He's, yeah. he's quite an, an advice giver, I think. Like... But what do you think if... Okay, so if somebody was going to come for, like, your expertise, mm-hmm. what do you think... What do you think you're good at giving advice on? Um, Dealing with... uh, Like, I think I'm pretty good at, like, dealing with a mistake that I've made. Do you know what phenomenal, I mean? Like, phenomenal. as in, like, okay, phenomenal. I love that. Being That's... kind of like, oh, I fucked this up. How am I gonna smooth this over? Lies, I guess. Um, Great. I think I'm, I'm probably good at um, manipulating loved ones into thinking <gasps> I'm not a monster. So I would do that. The oh, honesty of that. Answer. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right. Do I have the problem? Favorite manipulation do. technique. Yeah. Mine's tears. Yeah, that were. I'm a. I'm. Um, mine is be in a constant state of chaos so when seem like you're in a constant state of chaos mm-hmm. so when it actually is real chaos people just go ah oh, that's just because reese is chaotic slay yeah that i do really i do more the, that's sorry i'm just got look i don't know which must he be love hard you love for you catherine that. because you are a very together person 
And oh, so Catherine's when, thank fine. You that. Thank you for saying so that. So when things are going on, it must be like, oh, this is just re- like people know something's off and something's chaotic around you. Well, I think it's more like I could have the biggest um, disaster happening and people are like, she's got this. And mm. I'll be like, I need help, but I don't know how to mm. ask for it. So yeah, that's help. true. You like, don't ask for it. You people have got to try and guess. Are you, it's mm. interesting to find, like, have you ever had anything? I So I recently was in an immense amount of pain. I had a, I had a kidney stone moving from my kidneys to my. Jesus. But And it was like a wild amount of pain. And I've never, I've never broken a bone. I've never like. Oh my God. No, kidney stones are horrific. Yeah. That's like the and one, I, isn't it? It was really interesting to find out what I'm like in a lot of pain. I always thought, oh, I'm probably going to be hysterical and like through. Turns out I just go dead eyed. Yeah, me and too. And just stare into space. And I was like, kind of, Karen said I was very pale, more, you know, um, more <laughs> so. Yeah, how did he tell? Yeah, that man like, knows he, you. He held up the swatches and was like, oh, no. <laughs> um, Blinkings are still I, alive? I, I apparently just kind of like, he said he knew when like the bits, I wasn't joking or doing any bits. I was just like, laying in the back of a car going to the oh hospital because we didn't know what it was at the time. and But it was just like, oh, this is what... I, it's kind of comforting to know. Like, if ever I'm in a hostage situation where I've been shot and we're yeah. hiding, I'll be able to keep it together because it's always that fuckhead in the action movies. <laughs> yeah, In a kind of perfect is. storm situation who's like... Ah! And they're like, shut up! Like, making them bite down on a piece of wood or something. Interesting. Yeah, I think I... Mm, when it comes to real pain, tend to go fairly silent mm. and quite uh, denially. Mm-hmm. Really, I just, like, I just kept going, "Whoa, ho, ho, ho. ooh!" Like I just yeah. went into this weird space. Mm-hmm. I think it's mm-hmm. so hard in significant pain to judge. Like you, you don't know if it's like, are you being like a baby? Yeah, or is it like? Well, it's interesting you should say that because I think the repression of it as sometimes with my feelings comes from where I have expressed pain before mm-hmm. having been treated as dramatic. Mm-hmm. And Are you so- fucking kidding? You can't say that. When I got hit by that bus in Mexico, oh my God. you were the first to say, what no, you this. fucking weren't. Okay. Helen, tell Reese what happened. I got hit by a bus in Mexico Tell Reese what actually happened. Tell Reese how I was happened. getting off a bus and the doors closed on me, but I was technically hit by a bus. And you I'm get not it, having right? you, by, you were hit by part of a bus. No. I was hit by a bus. You she were had the door. My feet. You were touched my feet. By, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You were touched my, by a bus. I'm, uh, 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 my arm bruised. My arm bruised. Big. You all hit the a way bus. Here. To my mind, yeah. H- Helen hit, was hit, the bus was hit by Helen. Yeah, actually, which is body shaming. It's kind of similar to like when people have like bruises on their hands. Yeah, in TV from hitting shows, a wall. From hitting yeah, a wall. I agree. Are y'all ready Sorry. for this problem? Sorry, I am. I want you to know. Usually, as a fan of this podcast, I'm usually on your side. <laughs> I thought you were saying I'm, I'm usually a fan usually of this podcast. Usually on on <laughs> your side, but hey, for this moment, not you. But I mean. Okay, yeah, Reese, yeah. can I tell you about my pain? <laughs> Reese, can I tell you about my pain? No, yeah. we're doing the problem. It's not the same as kidney stones. I accidentally ate four pessaries, which are tablets that are supposed to go in your vagina for thrush. But I didn't realise you put them in your vagina, so I swallowed them orally. And then I had a little bit of a tummy ache, and that wasn't very nice. No yeast in there, though. No, no yeast. A lot of thrush cream, yeah. which comes out fast. Um, but what I did <laughs> last time I was Did you ever date a sick- woman, do you reckon? <laughs> Sounds great. Hey. I mean, anyways. No, Catherine, I want to say my actual pain story because oh, right. I'm actually very stoic as well and I want people to know that despite like, the fact the I have like made up brews with um, mm. uh, I should have before for attention. Because stoic, fam- stoic people famously, we don't know what they're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bloody mystery. I'm actually a mysterious girl. Peter yeah. Andre wrote it about me. So I was like in... Um, Oslo and I was like god my stomach hurts my stomach hurts I never pull shows particularly if you've been like flown Mm -hmm. out to do them and I was like oh my god I I can I can go on stage if I'm a bit sick it's fine my stomach was hurting so bad I actually dropped out of the gig that evening and then literally waited three days of not being able to drink or eat and then I was like I can't just go to a hospital that just feels so alarmist so ended up calling up the insurance company and they went straight to the hospital like you've got to go you're, you're clearly going to be very dehydrated and I was like no and I knew I was in loads of yes. pain but I couldn't register if it was enough to warrant going I think if I was in the UK I would have gone because I know yeah, what I'm doing yeah. but I want to go to a hospital in a different country where I don't know anyone those stoic Oslo people and then those yeah. stoic Oslo people and I knew why I felt sick but I didn't want to like 
I, I was eating an egg out of my bra every day. We don't have time for this. But like, I um, I've heard you yeah, 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 yeah. It's like yeah. a thing yeah. I've yeah, been yeah. through. Um, <laughs> but like eventually you get to the hospital and they're like, we could have, like you, if you'd have come in and we could have pumped your fluids, we could have been done with this. But it's like, I also don't want to be someone that's like draining resources. Yeah. 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 And that's it. I didn't, with the kidney thing, I didn't want to, it took, it was like the middle of the night and it took my husband to talk me into going to the hospital. Yeah. Because it is this kind of like. It? No, it dissolved. I oh, guess it gosh. dissolved in my okay, bladder. But it's the pain. The most pain you're in is when it is going from your kidney to, it's happened twice Dear now, God. into your bladder. So it's like a little jagged piece of calcium working its way through. What it turns out, quite a quite a small little pipe. Is that stress related? Well, this is what I asked. I said, is this like food? And she said, no, you're the right. And I said this on stage the other night. But the the it's you the doctor said you are the right age and gender for this to start happening. She didn't know I'm a non-binary person, so now I have a jagged piece of um, calcium Dysphoria. in my body who is openly <laughs> misgendering. Me. That is fucking the bullshit. Nightmare. Bullshit. Do you, have you got the calcium out now? No, I but I would like to make a ring out of it. Oh, that would be so cute. I just, like a little. Like Karen and I could get put on as like little wedding bands, just like a little. My, oh, my that'd be so piss, piss special! Calcium. This is why piss people calcium. are homophobic. You know yeah. that, right? That's some kind of fucking gross shit. Piss stones. That's disgusting. Really Your piss rings. <laughs> <laughs> <Our> piss rings. <laughs> that's disgusting. Sorry. No, that's wrong. sick and wrong. Okay, you ready for this? Yes, Go. and we're, we're saying we're all brave. It's from A. Hi, A. Hi, A. Hi. Hey, you bunch of hot hogs. Oh. I'm looking for any advice you can give me. I'd quite happily chuck myself down a well at this point. Yeah. So. Oh. <laughs> I like to tell people to throw themselves into okay. wells. Yeah, it's like a thing. So I'm 26, single, currently living with my parents in one of the most boring places in the world, Chester. Paint a picture of Chester for a Reese, please. The most charming place of all no, time. incorrect. It's a city in the north. It's a walled old city. They've got a big zoo on the outskirts of it. And... It Are you is, working for them? It is. How do I spell? You know the Real Housewives franchise? Mm -hmm. In the UK, there is a Real Housewives of Chester. Because what? they're like, there's. it's like a, a rich, like a lot of footballers live there. It's like a... Uh, yeah, it's got a wag like, vibe. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Cece's dog in the nanny was called Chester. The what? In the nanny? In really? the nanny. Cece Babcock, a little dog that she would carry around. But the nanny the liked her The girl that Fran more. looked after... No, no. It's, um, oh, the American the, sitcom. The oh, that's right. You guys didn't have the nanny. Sorry. Is that with Fran Drescher? Yes, I forget. I the know nanny, what it is. I've seen clips, but I don't know. Me the and we Rose, had it in me Ireland. And, me and Rose Matafeo have talked about this a lot. Where the nanny was huge in Australia and Ireland, huge in New Zealand, huge in Ireland. Got played. I think I looked this up once. They played like seven episodes in the UK. No, and it never turned into a thing. Oh, you missed I out. know what it is now from pop culture references as an adult. I've never seen an episode. Okay, well, let's stay on thread. She was the reason that the actor strike worked. Um, oh, she's good for her. She's yeah, and she doesn't look like she's aged today. No. I'm unemployed at the moment and have since have been since the start of the year. I'm just getting by with savings, but I'm driving myself up the wall. I've yeah. been looking for jobs. Twenty six year old has savings. Tell me about it. I feel like as a 26 year old, I should start working towards a proper career, like something I want to do for the rest of my life. But yeah. I think maybe I must be aiming in the wrong direction. I have massive dreams of presenting, whether that be radio, TV, kids, TV, podcasts, whatever, really. I would eventually love to make a documentary on my experiences in and out of the mental health system, etc. I just don't bloody know where to start. Yeah. I have reached out so, so many companies and people. So many of them have said that I should start making TikToks and get traction that way. But I'm 26. I feel like nobody really cares what I have to say and feel so oh, cringed no. out by making, I feel so cringed out by making TikToks to hear that. I've got through a few rounds into a journalism apprenticeship at the BBC, but they haven't Ooh. replied to me for a month now. And even though I've emailed them, nothing has happened. They've got some stuff they're working out over there, I think. Yeah, I think they're busy. Between waiting to hear about that and applying to different jobs every single day, I'm losing what very few marbles I had before. I have started applying to do TA work, but I feel like that might just distract me from my ultimate goal. Tits and ass work? Um, <laughs> so that would pay better. No, teacher's, teacher's assistant. assistant. Ah. I just don't know what to do. I feel like I'm moving backwards because I'm impatient and frustrated and want to scream all the time. I've just lost the motivation to keep going because I feel like I'm not, I'm getting nowhere. Please help me. Anyway, I love you a lot. You make my week and I love the hoggy community. It makes me feel so much less alone to know that mm -hmm. there are so many beautiful piggies out there. Love you, A, but you could also call me the poo emoji. Oh, no. What an outro. Let me, so. let me first of all say, if you're worried about being out of touch at 26, we are... <laughs> Fucked. <laughs> this is a worry. I also do not understand TikTok. No. 
It's harder that because... You should see Catherine trying to turn the torch on her phone yesterday at a show where they asked us to turn the torches on on our phone. Well, usually it's on, so I couldn't believe it wasn't. Then I had to... <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking... There were 60-year-olds in the front row with their phones out immediately. No, but they, theirs were already on. They've been <laughs> on since... And I'm saying, mine usually... Since oh, a goodness. restaurant that they were at two weeks ago and they were trying to see the menu. It, those places are awful dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the lighting a gimlet's like, but good God, sometimes you. Do you know what you do though? You get the napkin and you wrap it around the light, and it very nice. It <laughs> diffuses it. You know what I do? Water glass, and I make a lamp. <gasps> Have you ever Lovely. done that? If you're Love outside that. at a table and you need light, you would. Can we? We've got. To, well, we can't turn off the lights because it's the power. Oh, but I see that. But that would then glow green. It's gorgeous. That's so nice. Yeah, fantastic. Actually, that's genius. Well, anyway, life so, hack. So a. <laughs> so anyway, do that. Oh really? Do you think <laughs> we we'll solved that, that then? Yeah. Well, no, I think the thing is that so they want to be a presenter and they are struggling with the advice they're being given. Well, a and, presenter and a oh, documentarian. Sorry, yeah, and they are feeling like it's almost too late, even though they're only 26. Yes. What's our thoughts? Oh, it's a me. Oh, we don't want to let the guests. No, 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 because I've got an immediate thought. Go on. Um, I think that you go for the most accessible form of media. And Mm -hmm. they're right when they suggest online stuff, because you are in full control of the edit and what you want to do with that. If that doesn't feel the right thing for you, then I think you go for the next accessible media. Like, the BBC is amazing and love that you're contacting them, but you're going to have local radio stations. Mm. There, there's mm-hmm. always a local radio station that has a spot. Yet a big apprenticeship is hard to get. But like, if you're unemployed and you've got savings and they're still lasting for a little bit, get some on-hand experience at a local radio station because there are some technical things to learn. Well, I would think at this time, whatever you want to do at this time of your life, a skill set is far more important than opportunity. Like as in you mm-hmm. want the opportunity to come later mm-hmm. when you have when you skills. have all the skills That's so true because i feel like we've all probably been in situations where we've been given an opportunity and did not have the skills to back it up yes the first and time like, i did stand up on television it yeah. didn't make it to air yeah i'd already told my friends and family <laughs> Never <yeah>. told anyone, <laughs> oh we all have a version of that or like plenty of i've <gasps> been in workshops for panel shows and those sorts of things, like early 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 <gasps> and then you're just kind of being like oh and you, like hell yeah, hell. And just knowing or being on first time with everyone on a panel show and they just cut to me at one point and I never speak. Like, I, they just cut to me to prove that I was there, but I never spoke. Oh, if you're <laughs> if you're a young woman on a panel show, they, they no matter how many times you speak, they still cut to you just going, <laughs> <laughs> boys, you boys, boys are so guys. funny. Oh my God, that's so <laughs> You too can't silly. say that. And only when our boobs are jiggling. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have any clips of that for me. Damn it. I- also think like it's that th- the, I think I remember being exactly the same when I was 26 where it was like I gotta get this cooking because I'm running out of time and then at a certain point you realise like I've started in the last few years I think and things started going better for me when I realised this and this is not like a deep thought but it's like you should d- stop having like specific goals and have like a vague end, like goal that you're like because if you have these really specific things like by the time I'm 30 I need to have done this mm. you're gonna be disappointed by the time you're 30 if you haven't done exactly that thing do you know what i mean like if you mm-hmm. if you have like that this sounds more serious than I'm, no no but no, like, no i'm totally with you if you have like a vague idea of like oh by the time i just want to i want comedy to pay my bills yeah and that's whatever yeah. and whatever version that is and then you're not going to be like oh i didn't i didn't get a chat show by the time i was 40 like you yes. know like that's what it kind of yes. used to be yes, like yes, yes. and it also makes you more pliable within like we are in a very strange time a eh? Where none of what? us understand what's going on. Huh? Mm-hmm. Wasn't mm-hmm. her name A? No, no but what, why is it a strange? Well, thing? it's just like we, I don't understand how media works anymore. Yeah, like I, I thought I understood what I was, me- and now I've got to have a TikTok. Yeah, and I don't. And know. it's cha- it's it changes so fast, and it is really easy to feel out of the loop. The thing I will say in relation to this is, and I'm going to need to speak to my own experience. I had never done a stand up gig. I hadn't been on stage until I was 27. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, I just want to put some context in mm-hmm. there. We didn't start this podcast until we were in our 30s. Yeah. 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 I just think, you, first of all, just take off the pressure because I don't actually think that that's helping. Like, constantly telling yourself you're failing at something that you're you're just mm-hmm. beginning yeah. is not a good internal narrative. And it will be, it'll just mean you also miss your wins. Like, if you mm-hmm. if you do start to do something, you're like, well, it's, too, it's, too, it's not enough and it's too late and everyone else, it's like, it, I, a start is, should be like a yeah. clap on the back. I do think, I know what you mean about feeling overwhelmed by TikTok and I definitely need to do more it's of it. But noisy. I, it's too yeah, noisy. 
But I also think that's not terrible advice. Like, because you're like, I know it's not your favorite app, but you're good on TikTok. Like, you am I? consistently I upload. You do. But I just think, like, I don't have to like it to be like, this is a useful part of my job. And also, this is like a way people find me. And if I want them to come see me do stand up, which I really want, like, I want mm-hmm. to play bigger rooms than I'm playing, mm-hmm. then. I can do some stuff. A good vague goal. Yeah, that isn't, yeah. Like I that I can do some stuff that isn't just purely for artistic value. Like I can do some stuff that's like, you know what? This is a way to help people find me. It's my it's part of my admin. Yeah. Like I'm sure there are people who do TikTok and are like, whoa, I feel so creatively fulfilled. I'm never gonna be one of those I don't people. Know who those people are. I mean, but I do know those people. Yeah, like if you're latest, absolutely. Yeah. And so, but I think like it's also if you think of it as like building your CV or building your portfolio, it's a way to go, here I am. And also can I say, we're not really saying the obvious thing, which is like, make a bloody podcast. You want to host yeah. a radio show? Yeah. Make it. It's actually very doable. Mm-hmm. And, but just have a specific, I think a very specific um, function of it. Like I know, say, say we, what's our, what's the function of ours? Just to talk to people we like and Chat. give advice. But <laughs> we're helping. We're helping. But I think as long as you have a By specific kind of angle, why not? Bell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> people hey. will feel, Blinky felt seen. That's Blinky really felt important. seen and Simon felt seen. Yeah. And we learned something and about Simon. Simon's friend's mum felt seen. Yeah. And, and we learned heard. something about Simon finally. That we have. Yeah. Also, we finally got some recognition for a woman doing man's work again. <laughs> I think it was beautiful. It's feminism. <laughs> it's feminism. Um, but I think those are like, the thing is, it used to be though, that when we did understand how media worked, the answer would be, sorry, you just have to wait for the BBC to get back to you. Yeah, yeah. At least now there are options where you can start yourself. But also go local. It doesn't have to be no. BBC. I think like there's a whole, I mean, we know about local radio because we do interviews for them yeah, when we're on all tour. all the time. But like there's outside of like the big cities that are like radio stations and to learn the practical skills that go around totally. programming and how to run a mixing desk. Yeah. Because it's that, gonna be good to know. Because that is gonna put you over the line. Mm-hmm. Then you know, in in the future, if it's between you and someone similar to you, but you know how to panel, you're yeah. gonna get that job. Oh my gosh, yeah. So enjoy being ignorant. Enjoy oh. being new and not knowing. Because it means you're about to learn something. Lie. New. Yeah. Don't show off. To sort of go like, hey, I really want to do this, and I don't know yet. Can you show me? Yes. People respond so well. I hate fake to it not you knowing. Make it. Yeah, me I'll never too. fake it. I hate it. Oh, thank you for saying that. I didn't realize I felt. If that you're a new comedian, yeah. don't make out that you've been doing it for years. Ask them how a mic works. Because you will be so embarrassed. When you are found out, because yeah. you will be found out. <laughs> yeah. There's a movie called Catch Me If You Can about the best con man of all time. Reese, I've, I've seen it. He got caught. He got caught. Yeah. You will get caught for lying that you know how to use a microphone. I'm so <laughs> glad you've said that because actually, A, people do respond well to the truth of being like, please, will you help me? I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And B, it is such a special time. Mm-hmm. And I think when you put it in tandem with the fact that you're right, there's like, you want opportunity to come when you have the skill, but also there's a tiny window. If you actually get to do this job that it sounds like you want to do, when you get to do it, you'll realize there was a tiny microscopic window where people weren't watching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's your only chance to make big uh-huh. mistakes and to learn and to play, to like, play. I do think, and this is a lot of people say this these days, but we probably came up in stand up in a, beautiful time when we didn't have to put like i see so many new comedians posting everything they do yeah. on stand up oh my god on yeah. TikTok, we and just it's like, missed that we are so lucky like the amount of times we have bombed on and said things to people in rooms yeah. you and i particularly i'd imagine i don't know but, but Last like, night the, I uh, 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 no, i've no, seen no. her i've seen her riff yeah yeah okay <laughs> Holy the things crap. that we have said would ruin our lives yeah <laughs> Yeah. And I have one last piece of advice for D, which is if you are a man, I don't know if you are, but if you are, why don't you just go ahead and start identifying as a uh, documentary maker? Yeah. That seems to work. No. Yeah. For men, it does. Catherine, we literally just said, don't fake it till you make it. She's not yeah, faking but I'm not it. saying make- that. I'm saying that if you're a man and you say you are, you will be. Yeah. It is kind of a self-sourcing pudding being a man, huh? isn't it? It just yeah. kind of happens. Mm. Well, that certainly seems to be the case for like lots of the men I know who work in the army. Yeah. <laughs> they said they were, so they were. Yeah. No, I honestly think like... Put it in your Twitter bio. Sorry, I was, ex, was no going to say, put it Twitter. in your hinge. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. I honestly think just like... No, I agree. Obviously, call the, obviously up places and be like... 
this is my passion. This is what I want to do. Be open about the fact that it's like, it's a wide thing. Like you want anything from kids TV presenting. Yeah. All the way up to like making your own documentary and just be like super open to learn. Make yourself as helpful as you can for people. And just like, start talking about something that you care about on TikTok. Doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite favorite comics is Garen Noon, who does um he's an Irish TikToker. I know and who Garen is. Talks about frozen Most food. Irish sounding yeah. name. Frozen food. Most of the time it's frozen food. And it's so fucking yeah. funny. Talk about something that you're passionate about. And it doesn't have to be funny, but the passion will be what gets you. In- and I also think, I understand what they mean when they're like, you know, I feel like I'm getting older and stuff. Like every, everyone feels old. Like, every, like and I mean everyone, because every single one of us is the oldest we've ever been in our whole life. Yeah. I'm four. And so it feels very old. Have you seen that Chinese kid smoking online? Who's like five? That- that guy he looks older. so old. He looks way older than me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all about perspective, baby. But as in like you have so much more to go. Yeah. Like as in, I always think like I, you know, I'm 34 and I worry that like, oh, have I not? And then it's like, oh, I have fucking ages. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's because we're now in this weird time of media as well where all the people that we loved growing up, whether it be like French and Saunders or those types of people got like, you know, BBC deals when they were like 22 and they were just mm-hmm. given TV shows. Mm-hmm. That's not possible anymore, and no. it also means that I think your bet. They would even say like, "There's a lot of public things of like our icons <laughs> that they're probably like, oh, that is an embarrassing thing." Yeah, that I made. yeah, yeah. Like you're in like a nice time, I and like just really get good are. at what you want to do and work out what you want to do. Don't. It's like there's so much pressure to just start doing it, yeah. mm-hmm. Instead of like working out what it is, yeah. But enjoy the fact that you can work it out. Yeah. Hell yeah. And you're they living with your fun. parents, which in theory sounds bad, but probably is like. There's a TikTok. I would watch the entire oh. TikTok series. I'm 26 and I live with my parents. Problem <laughs> one. Open a drawer and list what's in that drawer. <laughs> There's your first TikTok. <laughs> would watch. Yeah. I'd, these are the. These are would the watch. I'm 26. I'm living with my parents and here's what's in all the drawers in their house. Yeah. Would watch and you work towards. <laughs> I'm, honestly, I'm so I want I that more than anything. I think you're now managing D's career. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> you won't have to do those cruises. You can just manage all the TikTokers. No, but then we go on a cruise and we, for money, we open drawers on the cruise. That's I'm good so glad stuff. you brought up the cruise again. Genuinely, <laughs> would love to like fix out a way that I could get one of those ships. Yeah, yeah, I know that would exactly be. In... Who books it? I mean, they're not going to fly you over from the UK. I'll fly over. Huh? I'll fly over. I'll get on this ship myself. If not, there's a P&O port in Southampton. What did we learn about touching? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what did we ask? It's before? a really what fun jacket. It can I good. touch it you, good. please? Yes, you can touch it. Sequins. Sequins. <laughs> <laughs> Reese Nicholson, where can people Thank see you. you, please? Um, They can see me um, touring around the country right now this very second, but I don't know when this is going to come out. But uh, Like three weeks? Four yeah, weeks? something like that. Okay, so I'm not in Melbourne anymore. That's done. It's done. Um, you missed it. It's over. Uh, I'm going to a few. I'm going to places like Brisbane. I'm going to places like Perth. Go on ReeseNicholson.com to get your details. I'm going to Brisbane video. and Perth. Oh. See you there. Do you want to come to Australia Zoo? Yeah, sure. Slay. We can see um, uh, Rob, Robert Irwin. Irwin. And Bindi. He's all like he's a little bit hot, but in a way that I'm not sure it's okay because he's 19. Ugh. But he looks like a man. Like Spine. he looks like a Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what they like all say. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. He looks like a man. <laughs> Don't panic, he's of age. Um, <laughs> Put it on a t shirt. That could be a tea towel. The uh but yeah, I don't know. And like, I don't know, there's a new season of drag race coming out. And yeah, there is. That. I'm coming I'm coming to the UK, I'm doing a tour. We're about to announce a tour and I'm gonna do Edinburgh. Say more um, about the UK tour and Edinburgh please, because we have obviously got loads of listeners there. Yeah, so doing Edinburgh, full run. Oh um, my god, the show Where's your venue? The show so um, I'm doing uh, what, one of the rooms in Underbelly. Great. What's it called? It's called Huge Big Party. Congratulations. Nice. <laughs> I think I'm on at 8.20 or one of those weird Fine. Nines. Great. Yeah, yeah, around there. We'll Look be there. Reese Nicholson, Huge Big Party. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. And then I'm to, we haven't got the full dates yet, but I'm doing like a, after Edinburgh, I'll be, I'm kind of in Jul- um, September and October, I'll be traveling around <gasps> the lovely country. Oh Just the God, UK. Gorgeous. You're not going to do Ireland or anything. I think I might be going to Ireland, maybe. I think there's talk of it. <gasps> Woohoo! But maybe. I don't wanna... Oh, you must. Just think of all the cousins of me. There was the last two. Yeah, true. There was a... The last two that I did there, there was a lot of like, why are you coming to Ireland? And I... I, I can imagine question. that. I agree. Question. We love Drag Race. We love Redheads. We yeah. love the gay. Hey, look, I now. only toured Ireland for the first time last year, but it was 
so lush. Yeah. I did. think you'd have a gorgeous time there. I've been to the Dublin, like to that weird comedy festival that's in the park. Oh, oh the Ivy Garden. Garden. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. love that Earth. festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Really it's nice. I don't mean weird in a bad way, but I mean weird in like a... It's weird because it's in oh, a beautiful just destination. Yeah, you're just like... You're like, I'm huh? Talk about come for half an hour? Is that yeah. all right? Yeah. It seems like such a posh place. It's really gorgeous. And then we're all just like piling in. You're not really even usually like allowed on the grass There's kind of a energy. Of what's his name in there? Um, Irish writer, gay. Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde. Not in the Ivy Gardens, in a different isn't gardens, it? isn't it? Around the corner. Is oh, it? yeah, maybe. Oscar Wilde. There's definitely a statue. I know the statue. I've seen yeah. it. Like this. Yeah, he's like, he's kind of You've made him so camp. I and guess. he was. Yeah, I was going to He was. Yeah. He fucking You've was. made like him camper. God, I can't say anything anymore, can no, I? can't right. touch what I want. It's a bloody nightmare. Well, this is how the men felt. Now you now you can see. Time's no. up, Helen. Time's up. But now maybe Dee could make a documentary about that. Poor mm. Helen. Time's up, Helen. How about a documentary about me going on a cruise ship? I would watch a Poor Thing style movie, but about you. <laughs> poor Helen. That was Poor unkind. Helen. You that was no, unkind. You, you, you fucking your way around. I'm a shit. fully formed human being. It's just called Poor Thing. Yeah. <laughs> I would watch. Make that, please. Yeah. Make that. Hey, everybody. Follow Reese Nicholson. Watch their show. See them in London. See them in Edinburgh. See them in Dublin because they better go there. Have a gorgeous See day. See them in person and touch their jacket. Don't Yay! do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Love you.